Hello and welcome. I'm Tanya Reason and this is the Gospel According to Mum, the show where we discuss the transformational work done in us by Jesus Christ as we live out motherhood and discipleship with Him. We've been talking to Jenny Greaves. In part one of our discussion, we learned how Jenny found herself in church unexpectedly and how she was able to see the faithfulness of God through nursing both her children through severe allergies. In part two, Jenny talks about coming full circle and nursing her own mother through the last eight weeks of her life, again seeing the faithfulness of God and how all the children, biological and otherwise, that she'd gathered through the years spoke into her mother's final days. The one thing that I didn't know more about as a child than my mum, the one thing, (laughs) it's arrogant in itself, isn't it? But the thing that sticks with me now um, is how much my mum gave Mm. and went through being my mum. Yes. And I couldn't have Mm. understood that until I became Mm. a mum. And so if we can talk about your mum, because this was the the very difficult thing Mm. that you went through is losing your mum. But as you grew with God and and you grew with your children, did that change the way Mm. you thought about your mum, prayed Mm. about your mum? And how did that take shape? It's... Yeah, it's an interesting one because I look back again, and I think a lot of this is is done in hindsight, and I look back and I think how amazing actually both my mum and dad to that point were to actually accept that, that I had a faith, let alone that our family now had a faith and their grandkids had a faith. Um, and again, I probably see the change in our relationship um, with mum and dad being brought more through the kids and and little things like because we would say grace at our home when we had a meal at mum and dad's we had never said grace that was never a thing in our home and I remember the very first time and it was my dad just as we sat around the table just put his hands out and said well we better say grace because the kids had always said grace Mm. Um, and so he was doing it for the grandchildren Right, or yeah. so he thought. Yeah. Anyway, um, and so faith was brought into my family home through my kids. Mm. And I actually found it really difficult to talk about God to mum mm. and dad. Um, but, you know, dad, um, dad's been gone nine years, mum's been gone four years. So I guess we had that five year where I was probably coming more into, you know, me being a worship leader, um, me being, you know, an elder in our church. Mm. You know, that was very foreign to my parents and yet I never felt that there was almost just always like an acceptance that well okay this is okay it's all right mum would come along to significant things in the church ladies things art groups and things like that and I think she saw through my other friends Mm. you know um that okay this is an okay place to be Mm. so I think there was a bit of a release there for her But I still, even to um, when she passed and spending significant time with her prior to that, I found it really hard to talk to her about God. I wouldn't say it's a regret because I don't think I don't think that's the way that God's designed it. But I sometimes wonder if I would have done it differently Mm -hmm. now that she's gone. But that's okay. I've sort of come to terms with that, that, you know, I didn't sit with her and say, well, mum, have you accepted Jesus? You know, you, you're going to die soon, so come on, mum, we need to be in the same place. You know, yeah. we're going, <laughs> yeah. you know, come on. But I know that, you know, the kids had conversations with her, mm. you know, and I just need to trust that God used who he needed to use. Mm. And, you know, and this is this being mum to you know, others in our church. And, you know, I'll for, never forget the young people and their reaction to... So mum was diagnosed with lung cancer and then um, secondaries of brain tumours. And when when we got that diagnosis and we knew there was nothing that could be done, um, she wanted to pass it home. Mm. And um, so he comes to nursing again. No nurse ability whatsoever. But anyway, so my sister and I decided that we would do that for her. And it was an eight-week journey. Um, and so I would spend from Sunday night to Wednesday with mum. And then my sister would come from the Wednesday to the Sunday. But we had, you know, in all that those eight weeks, I never cooked for her once. There was always food brought. I think that's where mum saw God in action. Mm. You know, she knew these kids all had a faith. That was really, I think for her, that was probably more the, okay, there's something to this. Mm. Um, And just, yeah, that was an interesting time of seeing my church community 
And I remember saying to, um, to friends that if I could have bottled that and taken that to church and going, hello, church, this is what church is. Mm. This is why you need to be in a home group mm. because all of these meals were provided by people I have a relationship with. You can only do that in a home group. Yeah. You can only do that when, as mothers, you've journeyed together and you've complained about your kids together and you've smacked the other person's kid, you know, because they did the wrong thing at your home <laughs> and home group, you know, and all that sort of stuff. Um, you, you know each other so intimately that they can walk into that environment with you. And... Um, that was a whole group of mums mm. and a whole group of my kids helping me farewell my mum. Mm. And that was a really tough season. Mm. I'm going to have to say it because it is so loud in my head, it won't stop playing. Mm. But I just keep hearing, let the little children come and do mm. not hinder them. Mm. And I've never thought about it in that mm. sense before. Mm. But, but let the children come to you mm. as well. You know, Absolutely. Yeah, because they carry a message. They do, yeah. and they do, and you, you just have to, you have to spend, you've actually got to be in the moment, mm -hmm. you know, and that's the thing, and and I love, I think I talked about, you know, when, when you look at what is a mum, you can be a mum to, to so many different demographics, you know, and even in our church today, I love the little ones, mm -hmm. um, and just noticing them, and just saying to them, oh, you look pretty today, mm -hmm. or I love that shirt you've got on today, or show me what you did downstairs, um, is impactful, and I think we need to understand that, mm -hmm. you know, but it's even, even being mums in a way to those that are older in our church, mm -hmm. um, you know, respecting them for the wisdom that they have, but also playing maybe that daughter role to them as well. Mm -hmm. it, it all wraps up. It's all part of who we are when yeah. we're a mum. Yeah. It's the ability to see who's around mm -hmm. and speak into that. And um, the little children, whether they're three or whether they're 15, mm -hmm. You know, they're important. And I know the little children in this last season of my life of, you know, what's God got for me? Where do I fit? Um, man, they've spoken loud and clear into my life mm. in embarrassing ways, you know, that they have singled me out because of something I can't even remember I've done for them. Mm. Or, you know, inviting, reminding me now to their engagement parties and things like that when they're kids that I only see at church. But that's an impact. Yeah. Um, and so for me, they're the, still the little children. It's yeah. not an age, you know what I mean? Mm. Does that make sense? Mm. It's, it's that childlike faith. It's that they're still, you know, looking at the world and they're discovering it. But they're trusting God for it. Mm. And I learn a lot from that. Yeah. yeah. And the timelessness of our spirit as mm. well. We, we're all mm. just sort of travelling on. Yep. Rather than we're not really an age. No, and I still feel like a small child coming to the feet of Jesus. Mm. You know, I love that because I'm looking forward to that big wraparound hug. Yeah. Looking forward to sitting on the lap, you know, yeah. having a story read, you know. Um, I think that's great. Mm. I love that. And I love knowing that actually that's real. Mm. That's what he has for us. Yeah. Mm. yeah. And so you've, um, just to, 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 to talk about that a bit more in terms of your journey, uh, <clears throat> you've talked about um, your sort of deeds led by faith, which has been... Mm a conviction to be involved in the mm. youth service. Mm. Um, to be honest, the idea of a youth service seemed strange to me. It was something new to me coming to Christ as an adult. Mm. It was strange to me that we had these separate services mm. because the family model seems yes. so clear yeah. to kind of separate us out. Mm. I think it's really important to have mm. older members of the church at the youth service Absolutely. Um, to sort of lead on. Mm. Um, but also you have... The way that you've had this sort of universal mother role has really been a leaning into the concept of being a mum. Mm. And you were talking before about how it's difficult for us now in, in these days, and I see it frequently in friends of mine who are outside the church, that they're really fighting this conflict to, to be a mum, but also go and do what they were doing before, yes. which I find personally mm. impossible. Mm -hmm. And the more I've lent into the servitude of yes. motherhood, yes. which sounds like a terrible thing to say. Yes. <laughs> but it's actually been it's the most beautiful um, blossoming absolutely. of faith to lean into mm, that servant mm, role mm. Um, because you end up being so filled. Mm, absolutely. But it's filled with something very different. Mm. And I think that's where we have to come to that place. Um, you know, because I was exactly like that when I had Luke. 
I went back and did supply teaching, thinking I could do it all, mm. and leaving him with my mum to look after, and then with a girlfriend. And I look back at that now and go, oh, really? Oh, that was terrible. Um, but it was at the time, you know, mm. and I think for me at that time, I needed to know that I could still do it because mm. it was almost like the world had given me this picture of motherhood. Well, it's all over now, um, you know, for career and all of that sort of thing. And, you know, I look back and I look at the possibilities and there's lots of things I would have liked to have done. Mm. Um, but God's given us a path mm. that when we have submitted to that, it's been a great path, mm. um, you know, and and even finances and things like that. You know, I grew up in a home where, you know, dad worked overtime all the time and the goal was to pay your home off as quickly as you could because that's what you did. Um, and so I've always had that money, you know, in the back of, of your mind of everything. So to even give to church took me a long time mm. to be generous in church. Mm. Oh, um, snap. I, I yeah. actually forced myself because I'm such a skin flint. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, and, and that's one, and I always remember that, you know, your wallet is the last thing to be converted. Mm. And it's so true. <laughs> it's true. But what I, you know, again, when we look back at what God's done, every time I've followed what he's asked to do, we have just been blessed financially. Mm. Yeah. And there's sometimes, you know, because we then went into business for goodness sakes, you know, when our kids were very little, um, you know, we're 20 years in business. So, you know, Luke was seven and Bella was what, four. Mm. And here we are entering into a business we knew nothing about as a husband and wife with other couples and um, you know I look at that business and I know exactly why we went into that business now mm. didn't know it then but oh my goodness the blessing that that has been to others mm. you know um, but financially for us um, you know so that so that it was almost like God saying well let me just give you a bit more because then you'll be comfortable giving it away. <laughs> you know? yeah. It's like, okay, let's just ease you into this concept of having yeah. to give your finances away. But, you know, he is so faithful in that. And, and even in our work, there are times when I've looked at the bank account and gone, oh, my goodness, I don't know what we're going to do, to, oh, where did that come from? Mm. Oh, okay, great, you know, and, um, and, and that was, you know, being obedient to my other family of, you know, my 165 volunteers. Mm. Um, you know, we never knew that's what we were building when we mm. said yes to that contract, mm. but how amazing to have seen that play out in the last 15 odd years. Um, you know, and I, I now hand on heart for God can say the finances are all his. Yeah. You know, and I don't have to worry about being that super mum. And yes, I'm an associate director, um, but actually, if I could just spend time, which which the job has allowed me to do, mm -hmm. you know, that's the other blessing is, you know, I can be an associate director and can be working at two o'clock in the night, like last night or this morning. Um, but I've always had time for my kids. He's mm -hmm. always allowed us to have time for the significant things for the mm -hmm. kids. Um, and the blessings come, mm. you know, and so, yes, we're so caught up in who we are and what the world tells us we need to be. But right now, I just love being at home and I love catching up with mm. people and seeing how they are journeying, which is a pastoral role, mm. um, paid or not paid. Yeah. It doesn't matter. Yeah. That provision of time is, is one that mm. struck me in a, in a previous conversation as well, that, you know, we expect God to provide us with the money and the food mm. and the clothing mm -hmm. and I mean that's that's there in the Bible but he also provides the time he does I find myself saying that to my daughter mm. there is time to do the right yes. thing and there always is I can't mm. fault it mm. if I just calm down yes know. yes <laughs> that's right yeah there is time there is time yeah the, this the, the, what came to me as I was reading what you were talking about with all of that was um actually a scripture from Luke, and it was give. It's Luke six thirty eight. Give, and it will be given to you. Mm -hmm. A good measure pressed down, mm -hmm. shaken together, and running over will be poured into your lap. Mm -hmm. For with the measure you use, it will be measured to you. Mm -hmm. And you've been talking about, um, you were talking about um, feeding into all of these other children, and. The scripture that you brought out was just so beautiful. Mm. Enlarge the place of your tent, Absolutely. says Isaiah 54 yeah. 2. Stretch your tent curtains wide. And this just mm. really struck me. Do not hold back mm. the idea of covering these mm. children, mm. whoever mm. they are, and not stepping into the mum role. But, no. but you can come under my mm. tent, mm. you know. Mm. And There's then, room. Yeah. And then you've proved Luke, mm. this, the Luke um, 
that scripture that, mm. that those blessings do mm. come. Whatever you've given has been absolutely measured back to you even more. Mm. Yeah. Even more and and that's on a daily basis, but what's blown me away is when we go through trials and we go through times, you know, because I, I guess, grew up, have have had an amazing life. You know, when I look back and, and the achievements and the things that, you know, I guess God has put in my way and I've grabbed and said yes to, um, I've had a great life. And I remember, you know, in that coming into the church and learning about what that meant to be God's child, feeling almost guilty because I hadn't had... Yeah, we, we, you know, any stories of, you know, some of the stories that we hear, you know, of abuse and neglect and just a really hard life. Mm. I hadn't had any of that. You know, even though I hadn't had Christian parents, I had amazing parents. Mm. Um, you know, I've had an amazing family. Um, I've had amazing opportunities. Um, but it's when you hit the trials. It's when, and it's almost like you're going under a bit of attack. And I never believed in a spiritual attack. I would go, la, 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 I don't want to hear about that. Mm -hmm. You know, that sounds a bit, you know, we don't talk about that. We talk about the nice things of the Bible. Mm -hmm. It's so true, you know. And I think when we stand up and we are going to be active for God, that there comes resistance. Mm -hmm. And that, I think, is where you need to then remember all of those blessings, drag them all in, grab them all in. Um, And God... I must say, and I'm probably being remiss in not writing them down and recording them, but the last three years have been very, very difficult in being displaced and, you know, displaced from, you know, mum's gone, where's my place in the family? We've been displaced in work and in my role, we've been displaced in our church, just in circumstances and um, things that could have pulled our family apart. But in all of that, blessing after blessing after blessing, Mm -hmm. And it can be in, in the littlest things of, you know, people just coming up and thanking you for something that you've forgotten that you've done. Mm. You know, um, being able to just generously bless someone financially. But God has poured more into me and given me more blessings from through others than I could ever, ever use, if mm. that makes any sense. Mm. You know, and I feel like I'm actually full to overflowing. And they just keep coming, right. you know, and smash camp, you know, classic example of, okay, so I've gone through a season in our church where I don't know what my role is. You know, should I continue to mentor and stretch my tent, um, having been told that perhaps it's time to step out of that um, and going, okay, I'm, no, I'm just going to keep being smash mum as long as, you know, and, and trying not to tread on toes. And my daughter is director of smash camps. So that makes it even more difficult for her now, um, except she understands the worth of being able to have a mum that can take the kids to hospital in the middle of the night. <laughs> but this smash camp um, reinforced to me that God needs me in that space with those young people and it wasn't just the campers I mean my main purpose when I go on smash camp is our leaders we take about 34 35 leaders and I would say three quarters of those are from our church amazing Mm. young people give up a week spend 400 and something dollars themselves to go on this camp to be up and spend time with some kids that let's face it uh, you know, quite testing, mm. but that's what I've always seen my role. But to see these leaders come around me um, and include and and honour, mm. which I haven't had before in that sense, as my eighth year as Smash Mum, I've always stood a bit in the background, don't want to stand on anyone's toes, you know. But there was such an honouring. And I think to the campers this year, I mean, normally I'm just, you know, I just hang around. That's okay. Every now and again, you know, there's there's a a camper that you get to have a good conversation with. But generally, you know, you're not the cool one. Everybody else is the cool one. I had such amazing time with the campers this year. And we ran a stall. So we sell, you know, all the sugary stuff in the afternoon. We have a canteen. And I was because it gives me a great base to just be around. Well, it gave me the ability to two beautiful young fellas who one lives with his pop and one lives with his nan. Um, Kids who come from pretty bad circumstances, they're sponsored to come on camps. They can't afford to come on camp. But they decided that, um, must have been the Tuesday, I had to go off to x-ray with a um, one of the campers and so when I got back they said it's all right mum we stood in at the canteen for you we, we made lots of so 
styles and and they were so proud and so the next day they came along and I said well come on let's go um and they were so proud of because I'd let them do things you know mm. and we had the the square for the kids who wanted to tap and pay and it's on my phone well I let them do that on my phone it was almost like they'd never been trusted yeah. with things before but we then talked about how do you count back when you're giving people cash change you know mm. and let's have a look at our stock control here and and it was just amazing to see these young fellas and they were so proud of themselves mm. and um their chappy took a photo of it to go back to the the school for it and so you could just see the pride pride rising in these two young men who probably haven't been believed in a lot and on the final night we we talk the gospel you know obviously at night time with them and one of our young leaders was wrapping up and he just mentioned and said you know we really love spending time with you campers, you know, and it was a beautiful moment. And so, you know, some of the campers are going, oh, yeah, we love you. These two boys turned around from the other side of the hall and looked at me and said, and we love you, Jenny. And the whole place just turned around. And I went, oh, I love you boys too, you know. Mm. And it was just, and one of the other leaders said, I will never forget that moment mm. for those two boys. Now, I may never see those two boys again, mm. but I hope that they remember that there was a mum mm. who their mum's, should have been like yeah not sure of the circumstances but actually that's what a mum should be mm. and so when I grow up and I get married that's what I'm going to look for in a mum mm. you know so you just don't know but God has just been inputting and using my name and then we kept back for testimonies Sunday is always smash Sunday we do some testimonies every camper that got up looked at me and thanked me for something mm. to the point that I was embarrassed and I said to Bella I am so sorry she said no mum that was so great yeah. even if I was referred to as old mum Jenny you know it's like hey get rid of the old <laughs> you know, come on <laughs> but how great is that when God yeah. uses you by your name mm. and he knew I needed that because I needed to understand I could have walked away or actually he's saying, well, what's that kid going to do? Mm. What's that kid going to do? Yeah. But to use your name, mm. yeah. yeah, it has really been an amazing last six months of him putting the puzzle pieces back together. Yeah. Mm. It's two things struck me as you were talking. The first one relates back to something you said right at the beginning of our conversation, was that God lets you know when he's proud of you and sort of related to what you were saying about isn't it wonderful when you f when you become aware that God has trusted you with something mm. I mean you've, you've mirrored mm. him without realising mm. how powerful that was from way back in the mm. start of your journey mm. that you trusted them with this small thing mm. which didn't seem like anything yeah. but they felt trusted mm. and, and it, mm. it led them on I think mm. that's really powerful especially with children oh, absolutely. to feel like someone trusts mm. And the other thing was how powerful it was for you just to have someone turn around and say thank you. Mm. They didn't have to give you 10% of their earnings. Mm. They didn't have to bring you a fatted no. calf. No. <laughs> how powerful it is mm -hmm. when we just put it, t turn our face up yeah. and say thank you, God. Absolutely. Which leads me back to with you, particularly with worship, because mm. I have felt very strongly in my journey that in times of trial... And I've also become aware of these feelings of attack. Mm. That the the doorway out of that is worship. Mm. And it's not that I find it difficult to worship, mm. but um, there seems an ease with you mm. that worship comes naturally. Mm. Would you say that's true? Mm. I would. I would. I think it's part of my daily. It's mm. just part of life. And um, and again, that's the the looking in hindsight of how God prepared that. And for me, worship is singing. Um, you know, obviously, there's lots of different ways that we worship the Lord. But again, I'm amazed that He uses someone um, who can't read music, who, you know, I've never, um, you know, never been big in choirs or anything like that. But I love singing to the Lord. And I think, 
it only gets better and better the more you understand who you're singing to. Mm. And even in things, I've seen it through my kids because obviously both my kids have been mm. blessed. It's been part of your journey as a mother, oh, hasn't They it? are just blessed mm. to be um, amazing worshippers um, and leading in that worship in their own way um, because I think we are a family of leaders um, and I think that takes different roles but, but we are definitely all four of us are a family of leaders mm. and... Um, you know, seeing how that's played out in my kids and allowing them space to lead. But as I've journeyed through being, I guess, thrown into worship leading in our church and making lots of mistakes, um, but never feeling condemnation for that. Mm. Um, you know, being able to giggle over things when you've sung in the wrong key or we've started and we've had to start again. That's just been my outlook. Well, okay, that's okay. Let's just start again. You know, I don't think God minds. Um, but what I have seen is how he refines, mm. um, how he matures that. Um, I'm a very different worship leader today than what I was when I first started. But I even look at my kids and um, I remember sitting in church one day and closing my eyes and going, that doesn't even sound like my son anymore. Mm. Going from somebody who I thought, yeah, yeah he's all right. He can't really sing. <laughs> Sorry, Lukey boy. To this, to this <laughs> amazing voice that comes out because I think he learnt probably earlier than I did what we do when we worship mm. is we turn our eyes heavenward mm. and there's only one person that we're singing to. Whereas there's a whole congregation, it's taking them with us to put our eyes you know, forward. But I remember just that change in his voice mm. and the words that come out of their mouth when they worship, they go, where did that come from? We've never spoken those in our home before. Isn't that fascinating? When it, your child says something. I know. And it's, what a blessing that is. Mm. We have to have a break every now and again. Mm. We have to reassess what our motives are. Mm. Um, it's been hard for the kids having mum as a worship leader. Um, so having some space out, allowing them to find their own feet. But there's nothing better as a mum than being in a worship situation with your kids. Mm. What an honour. Yeah, yeah, that's a beautiful thing. Mm, it is. Yeah. Having that um, having that time with your children. I think sometimes it's you feel like you have to have these quiet moments with God away. Mm but actually bringing it into the family. It's mm. like a microcosm of the church, mm. isn't mm. it? Absolutely. Mm. And Mark plays a big role in that. Mm. You know, our grace at the dinner table, sometimes we all roll our eyes because it goes on for a while sometimes when <laughs> our beautiful leader of our home gives grace. But it's heartfelt mm. and it's thanks for many things and it's thanks for things in advance. And, um, you know, our kids have learnt that, mm. that, you know, you don't just say thanks for the food. Amen. Yeah. You know, there's far more to be thankful for. And if we haven't had an opportunity that day to speak about it, then that's the opportunity at the dinner table mm. because it's all God's and um, and we want him to be a part of it tomorrow. Mm. So let's be thankful. So, um, yeah. Have you found that that role in worship, the, the, the patience that you found from God, the, the slow refining over time, mm. do you find now that... Did it at the time feed into your understanding of your role as a mum in your own home? Or is it now a sort of a reflective thing mm -hmm. you can see? Mm -hmm. I mean, it was, were there things that you used mm -hmm. in your church life that you were able to bring home, or was it more yeah. organic? I think it was probably organic. I think I think everything God pretty much does with me is pretty organic but I think I think it was probably more about because my kids were so involved in worship I think it was trying to make sure that there were parallels between what happened at home and mm -hmm. what happened in worship um, because you know it was very much you don't want to put on a show here and then go home and be something different mm. you know and things like that but but again learning from my kids so much you know I am the worship leader I am today because of my kids because they brought music into the home mm. that I love and we all love the same type of music mm. which is phenomenal and so does Mark so as a family we enjoy the same genres I guess of Christian music um, you know and to have the guitar playing very loudly in our home and the keyboard and you know all that sort of stuff um, you know, the kids were really bringing me into that sense of these are the songs that work well, mm -hmm. you know, and so we would discuss that. Well, this is congregational. Well, that one, I love that song, but it doesn't work as a congregation, you mm -hmm. know, and and so I think it's been 
we have been probably on a joint worship um, learning curve for God, yeah. you know, really. And, um, and that has just spilt over into our family. You know, I am immensely um, in awe of my kids, you know, of what the wisdom that they have and the work that they are doing and, and the giving, um, you know, they're things that I wouldn't have done at their age. Mm-hmm. You know, and even being able to say to Belle, you know, oh, I'm worship leading this week. And because I don't read music, you know, what key am I going to sing this in? And be able to sit in her study and just play through some keys. Oh, that's too low. Oh, that's too high. Oh, that's the right one. Yeah. Um, because I don't, I don't have that ability that both my kids have. Right. Yeah. So, you know, while I can lead, you know, give me a congregation of however, three, 3,000 wouldn't worry me. Mm. I can lead them. That, that doesn't, that's what God's gifted me as. Mm. My kids can get up and play in front of those people. They mm. can, you know, weave music through it all. I can't do that. Mm. So it takes all parts. Yeah. Mm. yeah, the wonder of your children having things that you don't have. Mm. Sometimes we worry we're not going to understand them or there's mm. going to be some obstacle there. But actually, if we just allow it to feed mm. into us... Mm. It's yeah. an enrichment, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. And, I, you know, I remember thinking, oh, I'd so love to learn an instrument, you know, and, and you know, my dad could play any instrument, could pick it up and play it by ear, mm. anything. Uh, Luke taught himself pretty much how to mm. play and could pick up anything and play it. Bella, exactly the same. Mm. I can't do that. Mm. It's skipped my generation. <laughs> um, but I love that. Mm. It's such a blessing. Mm. You know, our home is full of music mm. um, and it's Christian music. Mm. You know, I mean, there's, yes, there's secular music as well and that's great. But what amazing gifts he's given them, different to the gifts that he's given me. Mm. But when we use them all together, it's great. Mm. It's a real family unit. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Something that's, that's built over time. Mm. But you've also Absolutely. said that over time, at some point... As a mum, you're going to feel not valued, not seen, yep. Yep. not appreciated. Yep. Um, but you, you mm. have a way of seeing that that's that's gotten you through. Mm. God's grace. <laughs> God's grace. I think that's. I think it comes from an attitude of when you are hit with those sort of things, understanding that. And I think that's when your relationship with God is good, it doesn't mean that you're still not going to feel that, feel those things. Mm. So I think it's the realization of where is this coming from? Mm. And in those times, and that's been a recent thing for me, feeling unseen, um, feeling um, not having a place anymore or displaced or disrespected. Um, it's coming back to asking a few questions. And it's where's it coming from? What do I need to do about it? Because there is refining, mm. and even though we all like to think we're on God's great path, there's a lot of us in it. Mm-hmm. There's a lot of self in it, and so I think we still need to sit down and go, okay, what's this telling me mm. about where my heart is? You know, have I been doing this for me mm. and not for God? Um, and so you, I think you've got to have a really good, honest look at yourself. And if you're in a position that you can do that, it doesn't mean it's going to go away like yeah. that. Um, but I think it helps you to accept it a bit better mm. um, and go, okay, all right, yeah, point taken. I need to fix that. Okay, got to work on that one. Lord, can you help me? You know, um, so we've got to have those mm. conversations with him. And if we're not open to that, then we're going to be stuck in the unseen. Um, we're going to be stuck in the devalued mm. because it's us. It's all about me, 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 me. I need to be seen, me, me. When we actually take our eyes off that, um, and focus on him. But with that bit of work that needs to be done, it is realising that the enemy is at play. Mm. It takes your focus off the enemy, mm. put it back on the thanksgivings, the good things, and then all of a sudden all you notice is those. Mm. And it's it back like, to worship. Yeah, and, and in that worship, a confidence in worship, mm. because I think God wants us to have that confidence. And I think when you have that, you come with a different, persona, you come with a different heart, you come with a different presence. Mm. And it's a positive presence. Mm. It's a joyful presence. And that's what I want to be. Yeah. You know, it doesn't mean that you haven't spat the dummy. Um, it doesn't or mean you haven't run wrong. away for a while, gotten it wrong. Correct. We frequently get it wrong, don't we? We do. But it's the being able to say, I got it wrong. Mm. What do I need to do about that? And I think that's the biggest thing that he teaches me is that 
we've got a lot of refining to do. Mm. But when we allow that to be done, he just, the blessings are just there. Yeah. You know, and even if it's only us that experiences them, that's actually enough. You know, we don't have to tell everybody about those. Whereas at some point I would have been going, oh, look at this, la, 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 la. You know, we don't have to do that. The blessing is for us. Mm. And it almost becomes an intimate um, just between us and God, yeah. you know, and that's where you can be a mum, but you are my child and you are my daughter, mm. you're the daughter of the Most High King. So of course I've got this for you, and I see you. Isn't that enough? Mm. You know, and many times in this last bit of the journey, He said to me, "It's not yours to fix. It's enough. Mm. I'll do it." And I go, oh, "Okay, but I can fix it. It's not yours to fix." Mm. So, yeah, it's submitting mm. to that, which is the word we do not like. Yeah. Yes. I was almost going mm-hmm. to say after 27 years as a mum, it must be hard to um, to not want to fix it. But mm. in actual fact, in my own journey and in a lot of the other discussions that I've had, that's actually been lesson 101. This is not yours to fix. Yeah. We all get smacked with that bat mm. straight away, mm. don't we? You don't always yeah. listen to it, though. Yeah. <laughs> we know better. We can yeah. fix it. But that, what you said, mm. God sees me. He sees mm. what you're doing. Yep. As a mum, he sees everything. He does. And It's enough. Um, and he loves you. And that is something that I found overwhelming when I was reading through your notes. With so many conversations I've had over over the years, how often myself and other people think, he doesn't love me. If he mm. loved me, he would do this. Mm. I never get the sense from mm. what you've written or what you said that you, mm. that you ever feel that no. he doesn't love you. No, I've never had that sense. And I've had never, no, and I've never had that sense that he's disappointed. I've never had the sense that things were not right. Um, no, I've, uh, no, I know he loves me. Mm. I've always known that he loves me. Um, yeah, it's and I and I don't know whether that is coming to faith late. Um, I don't know whether it's just that having a very childlike mentality mm-hmm. of that's what God's got for us. And because when I have discussions with people about the Bible, my biggest frustration is it's not that hard. It's quite simple. Um, and so, and that's me, you know, and not coming from, I guess, a background of sitting in church all those years and hearing and, and, you know, now learning that there are different ways that people have interpreted the gospel. And so people have been growing up with different ways. And I look at the gospel and I just go, it's just pretty simple. Love your God, love your neighbor, mm. you know, and just that's how we're meant to be. Mm. Um, and so that that's probably my biggest thing is I just don't get it. I can't get into a lot of scriptural debate, discussion. You know, because for me, the Bible is my book. Mm. If there's anything, I'm not going to go to anything else because it's got to come out of there. And I think that's just that childlike, you know, just... Um, I'm not going to go in and read a thousand analyses of something. I'll go and read the book. Mm. Mm. And go, okay, what have you got for me out of this, Lord? Yeah, I think that um, you are doing analysis, but we're all doing it at the same time mm. in our own journey, aren't mm. we? And as you say, when you read a passage of Scripture once and then five years later, mm. it can reads completely differently mm. because mm. it's alive. Mm. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. And I don't know how you explain that to anybody who, um, you know, I guess is is not walking with the Lord mm. to understand that a book is alive. Mm. Um, because you can read it without really understanding it and still mm. see the beauty and yeah. the value of it. But yeah. it's something else for us, isn't it? Mm. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Well, I think we've Ooh. covered everything. A lot. <laughs> we've covered a lot. We have covered a lot. Thank you so much for your time this morning. It's oh, been utterly pleasure. enriching and I've pleasure. really enjoyed it. It's been great and it's been great to spend time reflecting and giving the glory to God over it. So bless you for doing this. Thanks for listening today. You can find out more about the show, our guests, and subscribe and download through all our channels by visiting thegospelaccordingtomum.com. In the next episode, we'll be talking to Helen Bartlett, 
Helen's journey and her dedication to God and her family of six has taught her volumes about what good is, what success really looks like, and how to see who we really are. In the meantime, be encouraged, friend, and remember the God who taught you to love will not leave you as you walk with him more and more at your own pace. I'm Tanya Reason, and you've been listening to the Gospel According to Mum. Till next time.